Hey, it's Chad with Winning Tennis here, and I want to make a video about the ATP forehand. How are they generating such pace? And particularly, I want to talk about late hitting action. If you don't know what late hitting action is, it's actually the lag. It's the lag that happens just before swinging forward. And that's the way that the ATP Tour Pros are getting so much power. Everybody in the top 100 now, with the exception of maybe one or two people, are using this. And I want to demonstrate it to you because if you could start incorporating it into your forehand, then you are going to have a much better forehand. Okay, so it all begins on the setup. Now, the more athletic you are, the younger you are, and I don't mean to say that with disrespect, but usually when you're younger, you're more athletic, you're more open to learning new things, the better you're going to fare. That doesn't mean an older person can't do it. We just have to put more effort. And if you've been playing tennis a long time, you're gonna to have to break some bad habits. Okay, so when the ball comes, we're gonna be in our, I like to be in an Eastern forehand. You can be in a semi-Western if you like, just pointing out the grip. We're gonna do our split step. Okay, so that's the first thing. I like to be, I like to be moving my feet. And then when the ball, when the person strikes the ball on the other side of the net, that's when I split step. That allows me to go in any direction. And if I see the ball is coming to my forehand, one of the first things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get into my forehand grip and I'm going to pivot out onto my right foot, putting pressure on my right leg. And I'm going to get my racket up like this, okay? So the racket is going to stay on the right side of our body. Now it's really important that we bend our legs. If we don't bend our legs, then we end up going like this, and we get a weak shot. So we're really gonna load down on those legs. We're gonna get our left hand up. Now, notice the position of the racket face is down. I've made videos about this in the past. Pros, they have the racket face down. Maybe back in the 70s and 80s, and even the 90s, people would take their racket back like this. And maybe some WTA players do this, but the guys right now, they have the face down. And it's on the right side of the body for right-handed players, of course. And once we're here and we're loading, we are going to initiate the swing. Now I'm going through a lot of other things that you can do. Um, I just wanna really talk about this snap, but you really can't get it set up unless you get down an athletic stance, you have the racket on this side of the body, and you have your strings facing down. That's why I pointed this out to you. Now once we're here, we're gonna have that flip. We're gonna drive the racket forward with the hips, and our racket, if I'm hitting the ball this way, is gonna snap back. So the racket is actually gonna be facing this way, and when we go to hit, we're gonna have a very extreme angle over here, and you can see the racket, it's almost coming in back of me here. It's a little bit more than a 90 degree angle. I'm not super flexible, so maybe my racket gets over here. Maybe someone who's super flexible will have a, uh, an angle like this, a more acute angle. So they're gonna have the racket come through even more. Uh, but a 90 degree angle is good enough. Now, you have to have a loose wrist on this. If, if, if your wrist is extremely tight, you're not gonna have any snap. Now one way to practice this is just to take your hand like this, keep it loose, and just flick it. Just flick it like a whip. And that's the kind of whip action that these pros are getting on their forehands. That's where they're generating so much pace. Now, I played a match today, and the people I play against, they, they, they're really wondering like, how I'm able to generate so much power um, it doesn't look like I'm swinging particularly hard, but that's I'm just, it's a wrist game. You get a lot of power from the wrist on, the, on the, the backhand, the forehand. You can use it on volleys and slices, and of course the pronation on uh, the serve. So again, once we get set up here with a nice low base, we're going to initiate that snap here. Okay, so if you're finding it difficult to, to hit this shot, you could actually have the racket here, 
and we're going to go really slow and feel, feel what it's like to get the racket whip back. Kids, right? So you're going to bring that racket back here and then come into the ball. Now the principle is that if we can get that racket come all the way back, it's going to come into the shot like a slingshot. So it's this and into the shot. Now we can get tremendous amounts of power doing that. We could also get lots of spin. And what I like to do is I like to kind of hide where I'm going with the ball. So I'll wait to the last second and then I'll just flick my wrist. And the person usually can't tell if I'm going down the line or cross court. And the ball will actually go pretty deep and land near the baseline. And sometimes they think it's going out. They just stand there and the ball is in. So that can't happen if I have a very fixed wrist and I'm hitting with an extremely fixed wrist, that's not going to happen. So you, you really need to allow your wrist to whip. I would just practice this a lot, this whipping motion here. Yeah, I'm gonna pretend like I'm hitting this way. And you can see that when I go, the racket is flipping back. It's a flip and then it's a com it comes through. So when you come through with the ball, it's going to be releasing the angle a little bit and then you're gonna make contact. You're not going to be fully straight when you make contact, and it's not going to stay all the way back. You're going to lose some of that because it, some of that energy is being transferred into the forehand. Okay. So when I do my shadow swings, and I suggest, highly suggest that you do a lot of shadow swings, I will load on that front foot, and I will try to land on that left foot. So let me move back so you can see that. So I will load on that right foot, and I will land on the left foot similar to a serve where you land on the left foot, except we're doing this for the forehand. So this is kind of a difficult concept for some people to get that the racket strings are gonna be flat facing the ground. You will start framing shots. I can almost guarantee that at first, but keep working with it because you will get it. Your, your mind will automatically line this up to come through. So a few shadow swings. Okay, finish over the shoulder and going this way so you can see what it looks like from the side. Okay, and you're getting, a, you're getting a lot of body into this shot. You're really driving through with your legs and you're going forward. And you can hear that whipping sound. And I'll just whip through the ball sometimes as hard as I possibly can. Once you get this, you get so much torque and so much topspin that even if you hit the ball three, four feet above the net, the ball will actually dip down into the court. It's quite incredible. Good unit turn, racket on this side, left hand up, drive with the legs. You've got to push off the ground with your legs. If you don't push off the ground with your legs, then you're nothing, okay? What I mean by that is this is a pushing off game and this is a running game. So if you're not willing to do those two things, you're probably not going to be a top level player. Sorry to break it to you, but I need you to do that. If you want to be a great player, you got to run, you got to move, and you got to push off the ground. Push off the ground. Same thing on the serve. When we serve, we drop down and we spring up. Same thing on the forehand. We drop down and we spring up, okay? So let's see me hit a few of these shots maybe more than a few, to show you an example. Okay, so now you've seen me hit the uh, ATP style forehand where I have that whipping motion. The camera that I'm using doesn't really slow it down into that speed. So it's a little bit difficult to see the whipping motion, but I guarantee you I'm using it and if, if, if I could, in my in video editing, if I could slow it down enough, you will see the racket flip back. I'm not just coming through like this. I am here, and then the racket flips like this. So from behind, it's doing a flipping motion where you can see it's going all the way over here and then exploding into the ball. Here, exploding into the ball. Look, try it out. Uh, even if you can't get, even if you cannot get all the way here, if you can get here. So if we can get a little bit of this, 
that is still going to be better than just a linear shot with a fixed wrist. Guarantee it. Try these things out at home. <laughs> Try them on the court. Go out there, have fun, play. For God's sake, play, practice, enjoy. Chad with Winning Tennis, I'll see you in the next video. Oh, please subscribe. And don't forget to watch some of these other amazing videos I created. Thanks.